All right, welcome back. Hello again, my name is David, and this is episode two for building your very own video game using C++ and OpenGL. <clears throat> in the previous episode, we went ahead and built our Windows application. And in this one, just like the title suggests, we're going to be dealing with rendering. Specifically, we're going to be drawing a triangle uh, on our, our window that we created. So let me just kind of sneak preview what this is going to be the end result of this episode or tutorial. It's going to be split into two different videos. So each is going to be around 20 minutes long. But before we begin and start drawing to that, drawing the triangle on the screen, I want to talk a little bit about how OpenGL handles its rendering pipeline. Specifically, like what steps it goes through before it renders objects onto the screen, uh, we have to understand exactly, uh, or like before we can write the code to, to render stuff to the screen, you have to understand how exactly it renders stuff. Because it's a little bit less intuitive than you would think, but once you kind of get used to it, um, it, is, it is pretty interesting and um, I mean, it's, it's very fast too. So, Kind of how it all starts is you have a giant data object of different uh, float values and that's stored in this vertex data here and what that is then converted is using see these blue squares right here these are all scripted functions they're all functions that you write uh, yourself it's not handled by the computer directly or it can be it can be handled by the computer but you are kind of uh, obliged to, to rewrite them to make them a bit faster or work better for your program. Um, anyways, so it, it the vertex shader here converts that, that giant list of like float points into different shapes. Specifically, it converts them into triangles. So every single, uh, if you've probably I don't know, heard in some sort of, like some of the articles, you can kind of draw any sort of shape using a triangle. You can draw squares, you can draw a, uh, a circle, you can draw anything. It just, de it just depends like how many triangles you need in order to draw them. Um, so once you get a giant batch of data, you draw them into a bunch of different triangles on the screen using different points. So here we have a triangle right here uh, showcasing probably six different float values located in data. And then after, after all those points are drawn to the screen, then it goes into shape assembly. So that's where it starts drawing the triangle in question or triangles. Um, if you remember correctly from my uh, previous uh, episode, I kind of showcased the, the game in action. And you, if you notice, there's like quite a few different things rendered on screen. They look more like rectangular. And um, those squares were actually rendered with two different triangles, two different right triangles uh, stacked on top of each other. So after, after the, the points are inputted using your shader script, it goes to shape assembly. It draws the triangle us usually in a clockwise manager, man or yeah, in a clockwise manner. So it, it creates the shape and then it goes into geometry shading. And geometry shading is if you have anything extra beyond like triangles that you want to drop onto your shape. Or I guess in this case, it wants to split a triangle in half. I, I guess for, it looks like just uh, just extra, um, what is that called? I don't know what it's called, uh, but extra like shading. The geometry shader, in at least in, in the context for what we'll be doing today is not very useful. Um, it is useful for some projects and it's nice to have, at least in the, as a programmable pipeline or yeah, as, as a programmable uh, shader in the pipeline, but it's not very useful for what we're going to be doing or 2D RPG has no such use for a geometry shader. So after geometry shader, it goes straight into rasterization and that's just basically the pixelization of the object. And after rasterization, we color those pixels with fragments. So in our case, we're drawing this lime green triangle. So after, so we're gonna have a vertex data 
of six different floats values. And it's going to then assemble our triangle shape like such. It's going to pixelate it. And then in our fragment shader, it's just going to color every single pixel located in this triangle, this lime green. And then tests and blending, that's just to kind of give the effect that it's, uh, it's triangular um, just on the, on the screen. So it'll, it'll like blend a little bit with the background to make it look a bit um, in like a triangular shape. To kind of go over a little bit as well, the screen of OpenGL, so like the window, is actually a little bit less intuitive. I think most people would think, you know, the X, X and Y axis, zero, zero point would be over here, and then maybe this is like one, or it, maybe it's lined up to 800, since that's what like we have our window size or window length to be. But it's actually a bit different. So in fact, the origin point of OpenGL or of our GLFW window is going to be at zero, zero. So the center screen, so this point right here will be zero, zero. And then each edge, like this edge, this edge, this edge is represented by one or negative one. So up here, up top here, since it's in the center of the X axis, um, it's going to be zero and then it's going to be at the top here, so it's going to be one. And then similarly on these edges as well. So after, after we go through our whole process, it's pretty much we're going to start here. As our, we're going to start our float value here. We're going to go up to top to here. Then finally in the bottom right before uh, shape assembly takes over, draws our triangle out and then rasterization pixelates it, and then finally we color our triangle uh, green. So that's what we'll be accomplishing today. Um, I hope that explanation will suffice, at least for what we're doing for now. Um, uh, for So let's actually just get to work. Um, we're going to be coding now. Let me go ahead and hide the camera here. Oops. And let's go ahead and create our vertex and fragment shaders. So if you remember from pipeline, the vertex shader sets the points and the fragment shader um, that sets the color. So we're going to be defining a file and we're going to call it triangle.vs for vertex shader. And let's go ahead and browse into our project file. So if we remember where it's located, users, dwads. Well, this is where mine is located. Yours is more than likely located somewhere else. And then game engine. And then inside of our main folder, let's go ahead and create a new folder here. And we're going to call this resources. And this is going to store like all of our images, our shader files, uh, JSON data files uh, in the future. And um, let's create a folder here as well inside of resources. <clears throat> and we're going to name that shaders. And let's put our triangle.vs inside of that folder. We do not want the pragma once since this is not a C++ file. And let's start off by indicating what version we're going to be using. So as stated in the first episode, we're using OpenGL version 4.6. So in the vertex shader, we have to signify that it's 460 and core. And the next thing that we're going to need to do is since we're going to be um, pu pushing in our like float values, uh, we need to kind of divvy them up into uh, different points. So to do that, we'll, we're going to use a layout here and we're going to locate that this import to location zero just so it's uh, it's consistently accessible at the um, at the zeroth location, at least when we we call it. And we'll, I'll show you the function that kind of uses location zero to 
kind of make this make sense. And it's going to be a VEC2. So VEC2 is just two different um, float values. And let's call that VEC2 position. And now let's define our script. So it's going to be void main. And all we're doing in our vertex sh shader is setting up our GL position. So our position value to pretty much reflect entirely what we're inputting. So we're going to set up. And um, I guess one thing to note, um, GL position is a VEC4, which means it's four different float values. Uh, X, Y, Z, and then W. And the reason for, I mean, we, we're not dealing with 4D objects. The reason for the 4D uh, like position is uh, for transformations. So if you want to like scale, rotate, um, flip, like all those other sort of like functions that you are normally found like in Photoshop or, or whatnot, um, they use matrix multiplications. And matrices are four by four um, matrices, which uh, just hold like different transformation values. Um, it's a bit complicated, and um, I don't really have like anything on hand to explain it well. But in the future, like I'm saying, like when we knew, like far future, like probably like episode twenty six or so. Uh, we'll be dealing with transformations and matrix multiplications, but for now, we're just going to be inputting 0 in our z-axis and 1 for our w. And that pretty much just makes it so it works for all the transformations. So go ahead, save that, and let's go ahead and create our fs file. So to do that, let's do triangle.fs. And fragment shaders, if you remember, are going to be setting up our colors. And our colors are going to be an output. So let's go ahead and create an out. And colors are located as a VEC4. And let's call it color. And the VEC4 for color is RGB and then A, so for the opacity. So let's go ahead and set up our color. So we're just going to be using a lime green. And the RGB values are all in decimal. So we're going to be using 0 0.2, 0 0.8. So they're between 0 and 1 to get uh, the different color values. And then 0 0.2, and then the opacity, we want it to be opaque. So we'll do 1.0. So now we have our fragment and vertex shader set up. We just have to load them into our project and then um, call them using the GL functions, um, as well as setting up our array of uh, different float values. Uh, to do that, well, first we're just going to, to load our We're going to load up our um, FS and VS files, so our vertex and fragment shader files. So to do that, we're going to be using the C++ file or the uh, the include F stream as well as S or string stream. And F stream is just a simple file loader. And then right after window here, we're going to first uh, just define the, the VS and FS file names. So let's go ahead, or sorry, file paths. So let's go ahead and define these as such. If you remember correctly, and we put it in the resources folder, then shaders, and then finally triangle.vs. And that's the same thing for FS. So just replace VS with FS. And then we don't have any geometry shaders, so we're not going to be loading that in. So the next bit that we're going to be accomplishing is we need to load them into something. So we're going to make some strings. We'll just call them VS code and string FS code. 
and then let's go ahead and do the muscle work to load these into file. So let's just put that into a giant try catch block just to catch any sort of exception that might end up happening here. So we're going to accept, catch the exception E and print out an error if something goes wrong. So shader files failed to load and L and then we'll return one if that end up, ends up occurring. And let's go ahead and open up our files using our file path. So to do that, standard if stream, we'll call this VS file, and then VS file path as the parameter. And the same thing here for fs file. And then let's define some string strains. So it's string stream like that. So VS SS stream and FS SS stream. And let's load our files into our string streams. So to do that, VS SS stream, uh, little arrows, and then VS file dot RD buff. So the read buffer. If you're familiar with Java, that's pretty much the same thing as read buffering. Um, then fs file dot rdbuff. And then we just have to close our files now. So vs file dot close. And fs file also close. Should end up working that one out. Then finally, we have to convert our string streams into strings. So to do that, VS code is equal to VS SS stream dot str. Pretty simple. And then you guessed it, same thing for FS. So let's go ahead and run that see if everything is working. So we cl click run now. Yep. So we didn't get any errors. So it at least found our files and was able to load data into it. In fact, we could, um, we could actually see if that, we could actually print out that file to see what it looks like. Let's actually do that. So I think I said VS code, and then we'll do end L. And then we'll do FS code after that. Now let's run it and see if it prints out our um, vertex and fragment shaders. And it looks like it did. So that means our files were loaded correctly and everything is working. So we can actually just go ahead and delete the scaffolding that we have here. And that's going to about do it for this episode here. The camera's back, hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Um, these, uh, these videos do mean a lot to me. So I'm, I'm really glad for all the support that you guys are, are sending towards them. Um, we will be we'll, we'll be ramping up the videos. Uh, I'm trying to do every other day for uploads, and I have a lot of content to get out. So it should I should have enough to to kind of go through this for at least the time being. Especially since I'm going to be working on the the video game as well along the side. I'm not sure if I'll do like update videos on uh, how that's going. I tried like streaming a bit uh, to see. How that ended up working out? I didn't really like that uh, too much, um, so I don't think the streaming is uh, is going to continue, unfortunately. But thank you so much for for watching this video. I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you guys later.